All right, so welcome. My name is Casey Long, and for the last, uh, well, nine years before coming to Agnes Scott, um, I worked as a business researcher slash business librarian. Um, I worked at a consulting firm, business uh, uh, researcher at a consulting firm called Booz Allen Hamilton. So if you've ever watched the show House of Lies on Showtime with uh, Don Cheadle, then that book, that show is based off of a book that was written about the company I worked for. And I actually worked with the guy who wrote it. Uh, so that gives you an insight into kind of the crazy work that I was doing uh, with that company uh, for a few years, finding consumer products information. And then uh, I came back to Georgia and I ended up working at Georgia State University as their primary business librarian for seven years. So I have a lot of experience and knowledge searching for business information, even though working here at Agnes Scott College, uh, there's less of a demand for it. Uh, it's still something that I love to do. So I'm really happy to be presenting to you today. And Basically, there are lots of different ways that we can go about doing business research, but um, and definitely lots of options for company research. But what I wanted you to walk away with today is really being able to identify three different types of information that are going to be most useful to you at the start of any kind of project. So to get started with that, the three sources that I like the most are an annual report from the company. For me, that um, an annual report is really useful because it really shows you what the company cares about the most um, to share with others. So there are some types of companies that are required to share this information. So they try to put a nice polished spin on it. Um, and there are some that are not required to share this information. So often with those companies, you won't find quite as much information. But looking for an annual report, seeing if they have one is always really useful. It usually will highlight in not necessarily direct language, but it highlights what their priorities are, what they care about the most. So to me, getting their perspective is one of the first things that I want to do. The next thing that I like to do, and I'm sad I have this misspelled here, is get a third party company analysis. So by that, I mean a market research report or something that's rating companies. So we've often seen NGOs do that with um, looking at things like social responsibility. So if you know of an NGO that evaluates companies, then that would be a third party analysis. They might not do a big, huge profile, but they would be evaluating certain characteristics and how well the company does. Um, what a lot of business folks are more used to are market research reports um, or SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis is a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threat analysis. It does exactly what I just told you. It outlines all of those things. And so if you get a current one of those, then you can really clearly see where some of the strengths and weaknesses are of the company. And then finally, there are some basic company profiles that you can find out there. One of my favorite tools, which I'll mention here today is Hoover's. It really just gives you the background of the company, but, um, and tells you who they think their competitors are and gives some basic information. But what I like about it is it's not coming from the company themselves. So it's not what the company is trying to sell me. It's what a third party is thinking would be most valuable for me to know. So we'll go over some of those. And then the final thing that I do in my mix of coming up with a company analysis is news articles. So um, I look within the last year or two or even a longer span. And first, I'm just looking through the headlines, seeing what kind of things are being mentioned. And I might be taking notes just to see what is being highlighted in um, different types of news about the company. And that can help me identify what's a success, what's a problem that they're experiencing. And it just really creates another picture of the company. So those three things together, if you find some information from each of those, it's really quick to be able to locate uh, a set of information from each of these. And then um, what that does for you is if you're about to go in, let's say for an interview, and you spend some time with those, you'll already know the answer to the questions that most people ask the company. And you'll be able to ask really nuanced things because you understand the problems that they've faced. And you can ask, oh, I understand that you usually excel in this, but you've been struggling with this. Is there a way that you want to address that? And how does my position fit into that? 
Um, so that's a lot of interesting ways that you can come up with questions by doing this kind of analysis and really put your best foot forward. Before we get into those sources, though, the thing that I need to tell you is that the availability of information um, has some caveats. So the first thing is, is that, uh, as I mentioned before, some companies provide access to more information than others do. And that basically comes down to whether the company is considered a public company. We call a company a public company if it's publicly traded in the United States. That means that every time you hear them say that the Dow index is up because the stock market's up and it's doing well, um, it's talking about those companies that are public, that, are, that have, um, have stockholders, shareholders, and that they need to let their shareholders know what they're doing. Um, they're required by the Security Exchange Commission uh, US government agency to let their shareholders know what's happening. And so there's very specific information that they have to release. So you're gonna find a lot of information about those companies, but even those companies are gonna be tight-lipped on some things. I often find people really want to know more about the uh, manufacturing process or um, supply chain management. And some of these things you have to dig into yourself. You have to think about, okay, what's gonna get me to understand their supply chain? Cause they're really not needing to lay this out for me in a very rudimentary fashion. So if that's what you're looking for, you're gonna have to be strategic in how you're thinking. Um, and you're lucky if you're wor working on a company that is publicly traded. If it's a nonprofit or it's a privately held company, or even let's say you're looking at PlayStation and that company is a subsidiary of Sony, then you're gonna have a harder time finding information on those because they are not required to reveal anything about themselves. That's not true. The NGOs are actually required to file a, a tax document. So we'll talk more about that. So you will find that, that it, they're not required to reveal quite as much as what the uh, publicly traded companies are required to reveal. So keep that in mind, just because you want it doesn't mean it's out there. And information is a hot commodity. You'll see um, when we get to the market research section that the cost of information can be really high. When I worked as a business librarian, an inexpensive database for us to purchase would be $10,000 a year. That's partially why we don't have a ton of business databases here because the per cost use would be so high. Um, and so we really need to see a demand for it. Uh, but we do have some really good business databases that you can use, but just know that uh, business people value information and there are certain types of information that they value more than others. So you have to be cautious. It, who's your source of information? Is it just some guy with a website who's teaching you how to do a SWOT analysis or has just does SWOT analysis for fun? Maybe they just write their own company profiles. Believe me, that's out there. They're trying to share their skills to future employers, but that's not what you want to be using. You don't want to be using somebody who's working on getting their MBA, their SWOT, their SWOT analysis. You wanna be able to do your own um, and use some of the more quality sources. So be careful about what information you're using because you don't wanna be citing something in a job interview that um, really isn't true. <laughs> so be careful about that. Um, and like I said before, companies are only willing to share information that's strategically, strategically advantage, advantageous to do so. So um, again, that supply chain, it, they don't want their competitors to know what they're doing so that they can replicate it. So they'll keep things under wraps as much as they can. So we have to be strategic sometimes digging that information out. And finally, businesses are constantly changing. So um, currency is important. When I was mentioning the SWOT analysis, um, the company's strengths and weaknesses can evolve over the course of six months. It's probably likely that they're gonna still be in the same boat but it can change dramatically. This whole COVID thing, um, that has changed how businesses thought that they were gonna be doing business last year in January. So the landscape is very different. Looking at a report from 2019 might not be as helpful as um, it would have been. So, um, so those are some of the things that you wanna keep in mind when you are searching for information. Now in today's session, we're gonna be going through those three types of sources and I'm gonna be using these three companies as kind of a sample. And you can see the types of information that we just talked about. Uh, I see that we have some folks have joined us since. Um, you can see that 
we're looking at the annual report. Annual report is one of my favorite sources to use when researching companies. Um, and that comes in the form of SEC filings or in annual reports or IRS filings. So these are annual things that they have to file, but you can see that different types of companies are required to do things differently. So AT&T is our example of a public company. Center for Pan-Asian Community Services is our example of a nonprofit company. They don't file with the SEC, they file with the IRS. And the LOLA, which is a networking membership organization in Atlanta for women, they don't have an annual report that they're putting out there. Um, and they're not required to make their filings public. Um, the only thing that I can see from them is that we have this business registration. So let me show you what those are. If we go to the AT&T site, um, this is their website and to get access to their annual reports, knowing that they're a public company, I usually look for investor relations. So I'm scrolling down to the bottom and it takes me a minute sometimes. It might be under about AT&T, but just take a look and see if you see investor relations. I don't see it right off, so I'm gonna to go to about AT&T. And hopefully on this page, it, you can see it took us to a completely different website. And here they have investors. Uh, there's a lot of great information on here, but usually when I'm looking for information, I'm trying to get to what's gonna give me the most information as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna to go to their investors website. Not all of them do it this way, but they often just call it investor relations. But you can see here that they have their financial reports. Um, and if we scroll down, they're listing, here's their annual report, their SEC filings. So this is a way you can get access to some of the core information. You wanna, when you're researching a company that's public, try to think of yourself as the investor. How are they gonna sell you on supporting that company? Um, and so this is how I would access the annual reports for that public company. You can see that you can go back various years and that can be very helpful for comparing how they did business one year versus the next. And I'll come back to this in a minute as to what you might be looking for in this annual report. Um, I just wanted to show you that this is where you would find that annual report. Then our other sample company, the Lola, um, if we go to the same kind of place, who are we? Um, we can see that they don't list anything there. Um, they had their mission. They tell us, they're telling us some details about them that's gonna be helpful. We know who the founder is. We can research more about the founders to understand why they formed this company. Um, and we can look at the mission to really get a feel for what they value, but they're not giving us an annual report. So we're gonna have to rely on their website and just examining their website. What kind of things do they offer? What does a membership get you? Um, what is the space? What are, their, what are they technically selling? They're selling happenings. They're selling uh, space. This is a place where you can set up office space. How are they selling that? What, so that's their product. So you can use their website, but um, usually I'm trying to avoid having to do that and just going to something that's going to give me a lot of information really quickly. And then finally, our uh, nonprofit organization, Center for Pan-Asian Community Services. Um, they are not required to list an annual report, but a lot of them, because of seeking out support from donors, find it advantageous to do so. So if I scroll down again, I'm going to the bottom and sometimes it'll list annual reports here, but I'm gonna go to, oh, there it is actually. They're just listing it right there. So we should be able to examine it there. I think also if we click on who we are, it should list annual reports as well. And so, um, that would be an easy way for us to get in. So what I want you to walk away with knowing about finding the annual reports is that not every company has them, um, but uh, you have to think about what kind of company are you looking at and uh, what kind of information is going to be available uh, based off of that. Um, but it is useful to look for. Um, I had mentioned before the 10K versus the 990, I'll come to that as well. I did want to show you this though. Um, if you are going to be searching just in general for the 10K, um, you would go to the Securities Exchange Commission. So I would just Google Security Exchange Commission. And I know that the tool to find all those public filings is called Edgar. Um, they have more than the annual report, um, which they call the 10K. Um, 
that's what they're required to file. If I click on company search here, you can see that I can type in my sample company, AT&T. And it brings up a list of companies that have those letters in it. Um, this is where it gets a little tricky. You have to figure out which one of these they're talking about. Just so you know, sometimes companies um, exist under a different name before they merge with something else. And so usually that information will disappear or maybe they'll operate uh, multiple um, variations of the company. So my instinct, I think on this one was initially to go to AT&T Corp. So I clicked on this one. And the problem is, is that all the filing dates are from 2007 and before. So that's clearly the wrong answer here. If I go down to AT&T Inc. Um, and try that one instead, you can see that we have the most recent ones. And here it lists all the different types of filings. There's quarterly ones. There is proxy information. I can't really go into all the things that these are, but if you are really hunting for um, really insider kind of information as much as as close as you can get, this is where you can go. And you can see I'm typing in 10 because 10K is their annual report that they're required to file. And this will give you access to that. So this is what it looks like. Um, you can see that it's not that pretty. So we'll come back to this. Um, but it does have all the information that we would need to um, uh, examine the company. Uh, but I will um, show you uh, the, the annual report is a lot prettier than this. So we'll come back to that. Uh, so that's the SEC. Um, that's one source that you can go to, to access public companies, annual reports if you can't find it on their website or if you just wanna see what they're required to file. The um, nonprofit organizations are required to file with the IRS. So you can go to their tax exempt organization search page and then search for the organization that you're interested in and it will list what their tax forms are. This is um, probably not gonna give you much information about their strategy, but it does tell you about their financials and you can compare them year by year. Um, and who some of their leadership is. So that's what that could be helpful for in doing a little bit of analysis on the com company. And then finally, the Lola, that was an interesting one to try to track down. You can see that um, their business name is actually not the Lola. This is the um, CEO. This is who registered the company. Almost everything will be registered with the state. So if you do wanna just verify that something exists and when it existed, when it was, when it began, you can go to business search on the um, uh, Georgia Corporations division page. Each state, it'll be called something a little bit different, but the, each state should have something where you can search for businesses that are registered. And I think um, for this one, I had to do a little research and identify that the um, officer was Eileen Lee. And that's what led me to this business name, um, which, enabled me to see at least when the, where it was registered. So this is the address that it's registered at. It's a different address than um, where it's actually located and the date that it formed, that can be very helpful too. And this tells you if it's a current um, company. So those are just a few things that you can do to just learn some basics about the company uh, really quickly. Um, and let me pause for just a second and see if anybody has. All right, so let's take a look a little bit deeper at our company annual report. Um, the things that I just reviewed showed you where to find the annual report. Um, this slide will tell you a little bit about what you might find for those things. We looked at Edgar, we looked at the who are we section of the websites. Um, the IRS filings and looking at the business registration forms. So we can see that there's a, a wide variance in the type of information. Let's start with AT&T looking at their annual report. So versus the public filing. So you can, unfortunately this is really small, but the first thing that you notice between the annual report and the public filing, this their 10K, is that one is extremely pretty and the other one is not. So um, both of them have the same value of information though. In fact, the pretty one is probably gonna be a little 
more misleading than just going straight into the 10K. Many companies though are already going ahead and um, doing, for instance, what AT&T does, their pretty part is just their chairman's letter, which um, traditionally I've always told people start when you go to the annual report, start with the chairman's letter. To me, the chairman's letter tells you for that year, what were they proud of? They're gonna highlight what they were proud of and what um, needed to, uh, what they accomplished, what, where they felt like they had some errors. Um, you're not gonna really find that here in the 10K. So that's one of the values of going to the annual report. Sometimes the 10K will contain that, um, but it does have its own elements that we can look at that would be useful for, getting their perspective of how well they're doing. So let's look at the next slide. Um, this is the for the nonprofit organization, their annual report versus their um, 990, the form that they file with the IRS. When we go into the public filing for the uh, public company, we'll see that there is a lot of depth there. This 990 has very little information that it's gonna share with you aside from being able to see current year finances and past year finances, you'll be able to verify locations. And if you evaluate year after year of them, you can see some changes. It'll also highlight who's on their board. So if you're evaluating um, diversity on their board or who um, is on their board, uh, who's representing as officers, you'll probably find that in the 990. So um, these are filed and evaluated by foundations. So they do contain really important information, but for people who are just trying to get a glimpse and understand the strategy of the company, which is what most people are trying to do, it doesn't provide as much insight there. You're going to get a letter like this usually at the beginning of an annual report um, from their chairperson um, or their CEO, and it will highlight what they feel like is important. And then usually nonprofits will highlight uh, program successes. So I always think about programs being, again, their products. What, what is it they're selling? They're selling services. Um, who are their customers? Their clients are their customers. Um, and so what products are they offering to their uh, clients? That's what I'm usually looking in there for. So if we're looking into that annual report, this is again the annual report for AT&T. Remember, that's different than the uh, 10K. And this is what we're seeing is this is, um, it starts off with this chairman's letter that they've done in a really dazzling looking form where they're talking about their purpose and their market focus. Um, notice that they're not using the word strategy. Again, you'll see, hear me talk about it all the time because I, the big thing that stumps people who are trying to help people with business information in libraries is they're like, I don't know, they came up and they said um, they were looking for the strategy of the company. Well. The strategy um, can be interpreted as several different things. And also they're usually not gonna be just like blanketly open with that. They're gonna tell you their values through their mission statement, but um, what their strategy is, that's really proprietary. How they go about doing something and what their strategic mix is, is really proprietary and they don't really want to reveal too much about it. But this can give you some ideas. Um, so we're seeing three things that they're listing as what they're focused on to uh, achieve their goals. Um, also what we're seeing in there is they're highlighting important things that they like. So their achievements, their strengths, their values. Remember, this is them telling us all the great things and why we should invest in them. Now their 10K, um, what we can look for in there is, um, I always go to the management discussion section. Look at how text heavy this is. It's not that pretty. Um, in fact, actually, this is the prettier version of it. They have a much uglier version of this, but I tried to pull out some of the sections that you'll see, and aren't these exciting for doing an analysis of a company? Um, first, we got their overview of how the company is kind of defined and what their revenues are, but learning about trends in the market um, and how they fit into that market, looking at how regulation is affecting them, their expected growth areas, competition and risk factors. These are the things that are almost annual in the 10K. So again, you could take, um, I've, I've been a business librarian for a while. So the example I used to always give was 9-11 um, when that happened. And if you were to look into the five years, um, like let's say the middle is 9-11, you look at the two years before that, you looked two years after that at Delta Airlines um, and you look at their annual reports, you're gonna see a dramatic change in how the business operated. And 
it shows a lot of strategy. So looking at multiple annual reports over the course of a few years can give you some unique insights. It's about doing the legwork um, because these things are usually fairly consistent and you're looking for some changes in them. So that is what I would recommend um, in terms of the annual reports, um, what I would look for. We're gonna go into third-party analysis in just a moment, but I'm gonna pause this recording for just a moment to see if there are any questions. All right, so um, we finished up a little bit of Q&A there for our brief pause, and we're about to go into third-party analysis. But one of the questions or comments that was actually made during our discussion was that students who are in Bridge for Business, a program here at Agnes Scott that is done during the summer where students are gaining business uh, skills, they end up using the 10Ks to do a thorough analysis of the company. So um, this is definitely a skill set that is highly valued in terms of doing an analysis of companies. Um, so the, the annual report and the 10K, the company has a lot of a lot of control over that. But what we're looking for usually to complement that is a third party analysis. And for me, that's either market research reports or company profiles. Um, I'm not as detailed in these next slides, but these are the tools that we have access to um, and that I use most frequently for this. These are not the only ones. So depending on what library you're at, if you're here at Agnes Scott, these are gonna be the two that are best for company research. We do have some other things that are out there that might be useful to you, but I didn't wanna do a super big long list of things. Um, and then there's fee-based tools and uh, some charity navigating ones. So um, let me quickly go in, I'm gonna open this link here. If you were on the library homepage, you would be accessing this from the list of databases. It's called Business Source Complete. And um, this contains a lot of different things. We'll be coming back to it for news, but I'm gonna search for AT&T and I think I was shooting myself in the foot a little bit when I was searching for AT&T because it's so hard to try to figure out how to write that name out. <laughs> um, there's so many different ways that it could be searched. So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm doing this search is I'm probably uh, hoping that it is going to guide me in some way to a list of company, a, a list of results that I can then narrow it down to AT&T. So it's taken a minute to get to that. Um, while we're waiting for that to open up, I'm just going to go ahead and open up a couple of these other databases so that we can talk about them in just a moment. So here we are, it's still working on at and Oh my goodness. All right, so while we're doing that, we'll wait and we'll go to, um, no, I should just be patient. I'm going to be patient. Everybody take a sip of their water. There we go. Okay, so you can see that um, my search brought up a lot of random results, um, but one of the things I can do to narrow is over here, it says company, I can filter, and you can see that there's a couple of different options. Remember, we talked about it before that, um, companies change names. So that's probably why it's listed differently there. If I click on show more, it enables me to be able to click on both of these rather than just one. If I hadn't done show more, it would have narrowed it um, down to just that one. So now I can see the types of information that is available. And you can see that that SWOT analysis is right up here at the top. It's a very current one that just happened two months ago. But if that wasn't the top item in the results, I could go over here to uh, source types and I can scroll down and identify the type of information I need. You can see there's also industry reports here and market research reports, so I might be interested in those as well. Um, I'm just gonna narrow it down to these SWOT analysis. And again, you can uh, choose to do a couple of them if you're doing really in-depth research to see how things have changed over the course of time. I would say that uh, just the difference between these two is not gonna be super great, but um, it might. So if we go into this PDF, you'll see what that looks like. This is frequently an assignment that students are required to do. I would not, if you are ever asked to do a SWOT analysis, I would not come in here and then just take what information because this is what this company market line has designed. 
Every company can do their own analysis. You can do your own analysis. This is not set in stone. This is not universally thought, oh yes, their strength is subscriber base. That's an argument. Um, and they give you the reason why that's their argument down here. Um, what are their threats? Currency fluctuations. They'll give you more descriptions about that down here and why that's a threat. But again, it's an argument. So if you are asked to do a SWOT analysis, go ahead and do the SWOT analysis and you can use this for inspiration. But um, if you're not doing a SWOT analysis uh, for class and you're just kind of getting prepped for your interview, you can see that this is a pretty awesome way to um, quickly understand what you might wanna focus in on. So that's one of the things that we can see. And again, that's probably gonna be just for public companies. If we search for the Lola or the uh, nonprofit organization, we're not gonna find anything like that there. So um, that's what we can use for Business Force Complete for. Uh, business Market Research Collection also has some in there and I particularly like the Hoover's company reports. This is gonna be a very brief basic profile. Usually what I like in there is just their competitors list um, because sometimes when I'm doing research on a company, I like to also do the same kind of research on their top competitors. Um, and so I might look at the annual reports of their competitors because that shows me a different way that they do business and how you could um, uh, compare practices and imagine going into a, an interview and saying, so um, I understand that so-and-so does things this way. Have you guys ever considered doing it that way? Um, that shows so much insight into the industry and can be super impressive. So that's why I do that. It helps you see um, how they compare to others. Um, and the reason why Hoover's is great for that is because just like the SWOT analysis, how um, the industry is defined can be um, up to the individual person who's doing the analysis. And I love the competitor list that Hoover's creates. It's again, not definitive, but if you're looking at Sony, um, you can be able to see um, whether its competitors are predominantly TV oriented or whether they're game oriented and what those industries are. Also Hoover's has some private company profiles for ones that are not publicly traded. So that's why I like that as well. Um, uh, the fee-based ones, believe it or not, if we go to marketresearch.com um, and we were to search for AT&T, this is again, not gonna cover things like the Lola or our Center for Pan-Asian Studies. Those are just things that we're gonna have to give up. But do you see that SWOT analysis? Um, this is the more recent one, just by one month. $175. It's the same thing that you just saw. That's how much that is. And that's cheap. That's the cheapest you're going to get business information. But um, if you are interested in learning more about, um, so this, these are the company reports. Um, you can see that you can narrow to more industry oriented. So if we're interested in, um, gosh, uh, I should have come up with a search for this one. Well, you can see here, they're showing um, sports sponsorship and COVID. These are all different. Also, these are, if you like business research, these are all companies you could try to work for. So they want business research skills. And so just look for these names of these companies and go to their websites and find out whether um, they're offering a job. But this is another place that you can go. What we would do in the business that I worked at is if I was interested in this particular report uh, right here, the sports uh, sponsorship, you could look for the table of contents and usually you can buy uh, individual pages. So um, if we go to the table of contents here, we can see what their sections are and there were usually opportunities to um, buy a page, not knowing what else is on there, spend about $7 just for that page. So, so that's another thing about business information out there. Um, and there's lots of different companies out there. So it's just getting familiar with those names. Um, this is the one that I'd like to go to initially, but some of each industry has their core ones. And if you are doing a news search, you'll usually hear these um, market research reports cited in there. So they'll say, according to your monitor, the market share of this company is. Um, so it reveals a little bit about that, but it also tells you who covers them and that can be useful. Has anybody ever used Charity Navigator or GuideStar? 
these are great um, for doing an analysis of uh, charities. Uh, I don't know if I have a preference over which one, but if we do Center for Pan-Asian Studies, sorry, not studies, Pan-Asian Community Services, um, I think GuideStar is the one that they go and they ask questions of the company. Um, they ask them to answer some things. So here they're listing out what the services are. That makes it really easy. Remember, this is what I call their products. Uh, their products are counseling, senior services, housing, and what they're offering in each of them. Um, so that's a way to think about that. And then they're asking these questions. What's the organization aiming to accomplish? What are their key strategies so far for making this happen? Um, you might be able to find this information someplace else, but often this is a unique response. And it can be a little bit out of date, but we're just doing what we can with the information that we can find. Even if uh, it's out of date, it's gonna give us at least the starting point to ask some questions from. Um, and then Charity Navigator, they do similar things. Um, I don't, I think they might have a different set of questions. So here, if we go to Center for Pan-Asian Community Center, oh yeah, they're doing a rating system, which is interesting, uh, looking at kind of how they score in terms of meeting certain requirements. This is you trying to decide if you wanna give them money, but it also helps you understand a lot more about um, how well they're doing as an entity. Um, and again, more questions to ask. So I love these two. Both of them provide access to the, 10, the 990 form. So it's another way to get access to that. Um, I have created an account. You do have to create an account, but you, I don't think you have to pay anything. So those are those um, uh, kind of uh, outside third-party sources. So I'm going to pause and see if there is any questions. All right, so now we've covered two different types of information. We're gonna move into news coverage. Uh, news coverage is my favorite to look through. Um, and usually what I'll do is I'll do um, the past year or two, or even just six months, looking at specific types of news coverage. Uh, the databases that we're gonna use for these would be that Business Source Complete and AVIM form when you're looking for the business news. And then you might end up using news and newspapers or world, access world news. Um, at this level, uh, being able to access news coverage is a privilege, uh, even though there's a lot of things that are available out there for free on the web. Um, people who are professionally trying to do research for news are gonna run into a lot of paywalls. So if you are associated with a library, it's useful to get to know the news sources that they have access to um, and to be able to manipulate that. Uh, professional organizations will provide their end users, that's who their employees would be, with uh, certain products. Usually it's not gonna be these, it's gonna be something like Factiva or LexisNexis um, that will cover all these different types of publications and having that research skill is really helpful to um, performing as an uh, employee in those companies. So the three, the four different types of news that I would be looking at, we're predominantly going to look at business news and industry news, but you should also consider um, how your company is being portrayed in the national news. And by national news, we usually are always looking at New York Times and Washington Post, uh, a lot of the national papers for countries. Um, the Guardian isn't just the only one for the UK, but it's a good one to go to if you're wanting to get a perspective of your company from the UK's perspective. LA Times is what a lot of professionals use to get the West Coast perspective and Chicago Tribune for the Midwest perspective. These are considered to some degree the national papers. Now, local news, Atlanta Journal and Constitution, Boston Globe, even though they're large papers, they would be considered local. The reason why you'd want to look at local for your individual companies is because um, people love their hometown heroes. So we're always talking about Delta here in Atlanta. We're always talking about uh, UPS. Um, we will be talking about them more than these national newspapers. So if you can think about where the company is located, then you can usually learn a lot more from their local paper. So even if it's in Savannah, look for the Savannah paper and see how they're talking about that company and look for articles that were published within the last year at least. Uh, probably not too much farther back than that. Um, and then you can, and so our databases, news and newspapers is really useful for that. Um, I won't go into those right now, 
they're like many of our other databases in terms of searching. So if we just go into Business Source Complete, pretty much you'll have the same features that you can navigate in these other databases. Um, business Source Complete and ABI Inform are the top level business news sources that allow you to get access to journals. Um, companies wish that they had access to these usually. Um, and so uh, it is beneficial if you go into a company that doesn't have access to them and they provided, they made the decision to give you Factiva instead and you want these, then you could probably go to your public library and see if their public library has it. Usually they have business source complete. Um, or take a class at a, a college and then you'll have access to some of their core tools. So that's another trick for getting business information once you're outside of this environment. But what we're looking for there is the main newspaper, Wall Street Journal, that's like the Bible for business. Um, anything that's meaningful will be mentioned there. Um, to some degree, you're going to get some interesting articles about the companies in Forbes, Fortune, and Business Week, and things like Fast Company. When you're searching these, though, you have to be careful about um, the number of articles that are just going to be one fourth of a page. You can get really bogged down. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to close a few things real quick. We're going to go back to our um, business source complete search when we were doing AT&T. Um, we're going to uh, take away narrowing it from SWOT analysis, and we're going to narrow our date range here. This is what we can do in almost all databases. We're going to narrow this date range to pretty much the last year. You can see that I'm doing that on the left-hand side there. And we're going to narrow it by types of publications. We could narrow it by academic journals, but really academic journals don't help us quite as much as magazines um, and news sources. So I'm going to do magazines. And I'm also going to do trade publications. So uh, trade publications are going to be these industry publications. Look at these names. Would you ever subscribe to any of these? Maybe you're thinking Women's Wear, Wear Daily if you like fashion. But really, this is all about business. This is what it takes to run a business in one of these industries. And so you usually want to find whatever their trade publication is and uh, look into that in addition to these business news sources. And so by narrowing this down, we can see that we've um, created a list of some of the core things that are being talked about for this year. I'm going to go ahead and do page options. Again, I do this in almost all of them. I'm going to put 50 on a page here because if I do 50 on a page, I can get through 432 articles pretty quick. Um, just skimming the headlines and seeing, just skimming the headlines and marking them um, of things that look interesting to me will help me start understanding what's in the news related to this company. You can always resort your um, page to do the newest first if you want to see the latest stuff, or if you want to see how a situation evolved, you can do the oldest first so you can see what does their year look like from beginning to end? And so we could go year by year, sorry, uh, day by day, month by month. Um, this is a large number and we don't really need to look at all of these, especially since so many of them are gonna be uh, short articles. There's two things that you can do in this particular database. One, if we go to advanced search, we can decide that we're gonna search for um, all, thing, all articles that are greater than one page. So, uh, we don't want those short snippets maybe maybe we want something in depth and we're going to search for just publications that are more than a page we'll have to reset our date ranges again and narrow down to the types of publications that we're interested in but this is a way that we can um, narrow that focus wow there are really a lot that have um I must have done something weird. Oh, I know what it is. We, we're no longer narrowing it down to um, by company. So I'm gonna use this filter to narrow it to company just as a quick thing. So here we're looking at one year of uh, things that mention the words AT&T in the company entity. Um, and so we're able to skim through and see if there's any valuable articles uh, that would interest us here. Um, and something else that you can do in here is you can narrow by the name of the publication. So if you wanna see where it's being published, you can click here and then uh, resort this. And we should be able to see the names of the publications and things like Bond Buyer, 
it doesn't seem like it's going to be that helpful to us, but since we're looking at broadcasting and cable, that looks helpful. Uh, Fortune, that was one of the ones that I was interested in um, as one of my main business ones. Might be intrigued by this Hollywood reporter, but overall, those were the major ones that I wanted to look at. And so that's another strategy that you can use in terms of narrowing your searches to learn more about the company. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of how I would go about doing searching. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can, uh, oh, sorry, one other thing I wanted to show um, is that, uh, let's go back. So um, these, you can see that for scale, we created um, company profiles for the students. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this into chat for those of you who are here so that you can see links to them. This is only accessible for people in the Agnes Scott community. But if you wanna see what all the sources can get you um, and the extent of what would be maybe a good profile to do if you're trying to do an interview with a company, this is how I would probably construct it. Um, and so I shared with you some of the options that we have for an example of how to do that. So if you need additional help, just email us at library at agnescott.edu. I'm gonna be your primary person for being able to find business information, but anybody can help. So just email us and they'll get you to the right person. I'm gonna stop sharing and thank you and have a great day. I'm gonna end this recording now. So let's see.